Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond from the Remote Collective, and this is my amazing friend, Alexandra Heller. Is that how you say your name? I was yes, funny. it is. Okay, um, so we both met in Chiang Mai, Thailand, but um, Alex, where are you now? I am in Berlin, Germany. Yay, so she's all the way up in Berlin. I've gone there and visited you, had a great time, and originally we're both from the west coast of the United States. So I'm from California. You're from Washington, right? Uh, no, I'm from California, Bay Area. Amazing. Yeah. Cool. So we're both California girls and traveling all over the world. And I wanted to share with people like, yeah, just part of your story and just kind of what you're up to now, because I think it's super empowering for a lot of women, especially who want to travel, want to, you know, go after their dreams and also women who are interested in tech. Like, I think this is a big conversation that you and I were both interested in talking about. And also like manifesting, time abundance. I love all of this stuff. I'm like way into that. So, um, but like the first question that I think a lot of people would be interested in is what got you on the plane and started traveling? Cause you were, you were, you know, in, you were working in tech in the Bay area, right? Is that correct? Um, I was actually working in e-commerce. So I was managing an e-commerce company and directing the marketing there. And um, I just felt like I was at the, end of what I could get out of that experience and at the same time I was reading all these like digital nomad blogs and uh, <laughs> I think this was I don't know I feel like this was at like the peak peak digital nomad um, era and I was just like wow this sounds so amazing and I can travel and I can support myself and actually see the world and I'd really never traveled before that um, because mm -hmm. I was always just making money that was all of life um, and so I was like, oh, wow, this would be really cool. And then uh, it was really a difficult decision to make because I was really settled. I had this beautiful apartment, I had all my stuff and, um, and I had a good, good job too. So, but I just kept on feeling this energy, this pull. And I just, and I was like trying to sh shut it up. I was just like, stop, stop. I'm fine. Everything's great. Mm -hmm. And it just wouldn't let go. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to surrender and see what happens. And do you, what do you feel like that is now that you look back on like, was that your intuition or was that like your soul just being like, get me the fuck out of here? <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting. It definitely wasn't my logical mind. My logical mind was like, that doesn't make sense here. You know, you can save up more money by staying in this situation. You've got it figured out. Um, and, you know, on the other side of, you know, getting on a plane is you have no idea what's going to happen. You have no idea what, you know, and then all this, because of that, unknowing there's just a lot of fear and you know and, and being scared and not being certain and so the logical mind doesn't really like that so it's definitely not my logical mind um <laughs> not sure what it is but now I really try to after that point I really try to listen to where is the energy like where's the energy and trying to follow that instead of like trying to fight that um mm -hmm. and it seems like if I'm in alignment with whatever I'm drawn to then things go a lot better that's awesome and what has been, I mean, when, what year did you start your tra traveling? This was 2017. Okay. Yeah. So it's been, yeah, it's been four years now almost. Right. And I mean, that's not a little amount of time. So how has it been? Like, cause I think people I'll always wonder, you know, a lot of people I talk to, especially consulting, they, they assume that you have to get a full-time remote job in order to start traveling. And I think that is like the biggest misnomer of just being like, Basically, they, they want someone to give them permission to go traveling and work remotely, but I don't think that's how like 90% of us work in, the, in like the reality. So tell us a little bit about just briefly your journey. Yeah. So um, I, when I left my job, I tried to leave on super, super good terms. And then I was like, hey, if you want, I can still, you know, be a contractor and I can still continue to help you out. I'm just going to be remote, whatever. And so they said yes to that. And I've, I've been now in three job situations where things have ended like that. And I'm able to kind of have more, more time um, and location flexibility um, but while also having this kind of, you're carrying some of that secure life that you had before. Um, so that's what I did. And that was really helpful. I didn't have anything figured out. I had this business that I w wanted to do. And I think that that was helpful because it gave me something to focus on. I ended up not doing it, but it was helpful just like, oh, I'm doing this. And this gives me like a sense of okayness that I'm mm -hmm. working on something that's gonna be helpful in the future. Cool. And um, how did you get the job in Berlin? Like, tell me that story, cause that's a cool story. Yeah, so, um, so I really originally was thinking that I would 
travel around for like a year or more. But um, I met some people at a meetup and then they invited me to Barcelona to come work with them. And then I was uh, working out in Barcelona and then there was a conference that they were putting on. Um, so it was a blockchain conference. And then I was there and then I met some people that I really liked and they're like, oh, come work with us. We, we're in Berlin and I'd never been to Berlin and I was like, okay, um, maybe. And then, but I kept talking to them and I just really, really liked them. Um, and so it just became really clear that all of the energy was going there. And I actually had two other job offers at the time that were also gonna be remote friendly. I could kind of travel and, and do whatever I wanted. Um, but this one was in Berlin and I just felt like there's so much energy more for the Berlin location. And I didn't know why, it didn't make any logical sense again. Um, but I was like, okay, I'll, I'll do this. And um, everybody told me that to not worry that like I would love Berlin and I, and I arrived and luckily it was spring uh, and not winter, but uh, <laughs> I arrived and I did, I loved it. So it was just this amazing bunch of synchronicities. I was definitely in the right place at the right time, but also like what I did happen was I kept on asking people, I was like, hey, do you want help with marketing? I can write you a blog post, blah, blah, blah. Like I had a skill set that I could offer to people and that was really, really helpful. That's awesome. And how long have you been there in Berlin now? Yeah, so I um, came in the spring of 2018, so I didn't end up traveling as long as I wanted. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been here ever since. And I think that I will probably be staying here. I just really like it. It's it's awesome. That's awesome. Are you guys in the same apartment as when I visited? Uh, yes, same apartment. Yeah, I was like, I think I recognize that room except for more plants. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, lockdown awesome. got more plants. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Um, so, Tell me, so I want, I just want to tell you a little bit about what I've been working on. It's like all of last summer, I organized this mastermind for millionaires here on the island on Copenhagen. And for me, it was like a big, I've been doing like for the last five years or as long as I have been out of corporate, I've been trying to empower women in business and um, through masterminds, conferences, meetups, whatever, whatever, accelerator programs. And this last summer, I just kept getting more and more exposed to crypto and blockchain technology through this mastermind where I didn't realize at the time, but a lot of the people that were coming are like major figures in blockchain. And this island just happens to attract a lot of people who work in crypto and blockchain technology because they it's a paradise here. So they're like, why not live in paradise and work on the thing I love? So um, I kept hearing about it more and more. And last summer before it all took off, I invested um, money into it. And I was like, yeah, let's see, you know, I just had like, they would not stop talking about it and like altcoins and all these things. And I was like, okay, fine. I'm tired of hearing about this coin blowing up and not, and not like investing in it. So I started investing and then it really started taking off. And I was like, okay, this to me feels like, it feels like the beginning of the internet in the sense that we don't actually understand how big this is gonna be. And there's so many possibilities. And at this point, you, it's like when the internet started, you could just make a website saying you were starting an internet company and people would invest in you. And I feel like that's what's happening with altcoins and stuff right now. Um, so, but what I just realized is like this big potential of, yeah, growth, opportunity, whatever. And then I see this really big opportunity to lay the foundation and program it in a systematic level to be, make it more accessible to women and minority groups. And because like when I was in South Africa, right before COVID hit, um, I was in one of the co-working spaces and they were doing a coding bootcamp for black African women. And I was like, this is awesome. Like, why are we not doing more of this? And then I was like, why did this happen 20 years after the internet happened? And could we have this version, but for blockchain, like to get people in minority groups who it would literally change the course of their, not their lives, but their entire family's lives, all the generations to come, if we could empower them, especially women, to be more involved in this, in this sector. And just like the last, what is it, March, three months, I've just been going crazy, like interviewing tons of people and like going, going through all my LinkedIn and just like anyone who's ready to like blockchain. And there's a lot of people on the island and there's a lot of people in New York that are very interested in talking to me because it seems like, you know, everyone wants, especially a woman in business, someone who can build community, someone who has a worldwide network. They're like, yeah, of course we want to work with you on something. But I'm trying to figure out... <laughs> the best way to do this as in like there's tons of opportunities and yeah I can throw my skill set somewhere and I can support something but what's gonna for me the biggest question is like what is gonna make the most impact and what I see with at least locally is a lot of my girlfriends here are like I want to start investing I want to get into Bitcoin I don't actually even know how to sign up for an exchange I don't know how to do this this and this and I don't see a lot of courses or any sort of educational stuff that's like for women by women 
um, because it seems like, you know, I, I took some Ivan on tech courses. I took like, just, it just kind of like started the landscape of like looking around and my boyfriend is a crypto trader. So like we talk about crypto every single day and I'm like in the world of it. But then I think about, you know, one of my best girlfriends on the island who's like, I have $10,000. Like, can I just hand it to you? Can you help me invest? And I'm like, I don't know if I want that responsibility, but I want to empower you to do something with that money. So I don't know. I just, you and I have never talked about this and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, there's, um, so there's two, there's two organizations that I know that are female focused. Um, so there's Crypto Chicks, I think was one. And, um, and I think they do educational stuff. And then there's She256, which is another, uh, it's like trying to get more women to work in blockchain. Um, but I could send you those links. Yeah. Um, but so, so it, there's a lot of opportunities. I think the biggest, um, okay, so there's one, there's like working in blockchain and I think that there's this perception that you have to be a, be a developer and that's totally not true. There's so much need for just like every single skill set. So mm -hmm. um, that's one thing. And then the other thing is that in terms of investment, my perception or like how I've always, whenever I go to conferences or whatever, it's like the ratio of men to women, it's like 30, 30 guys to, to one woman. That's the gender ratio. Um, it's actually worse than tech, I think. Um, and maybe that's changing because crypto is becoming more mainstream, um, but it really sucks because it is a good investment or it can be a good Yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, <laughs> but um, I remember it, just going to all the Bitcoin meetups in Chiang Mai and I was, always, I was the only woman mm -hmm. most of the time. Yeah, and that was really intimidating. But um, yeah, so so there's yeah a good opportunity for women to you know invest and make money. Uh, I have caution about advising people to invest when it's a bull market um, mm -hmm. because I was in 2018 and you know Bitcoin was at 20k and then it went to 5k. So mm -hmm. it, it's kind of like you you don't know how to time it. Um, yeah, anyway. I don't want to tell them to put their money in and forget about it. I want to tell them, I want to like teach them how to watch their money and put stop losses in and like understand what the market is doing and blah, blah, blah. And I don't, I think it's very irresponsible to just be like, yeah, put your money in there and just forget about it. Yeah. I mean, although it, for most of, because the industry is just, you know, the, the market cap is growing. So mm -hmm. putting your money in and just totaling, as they say, like that's actually a fine strategy for most of the time, unless you really get the timing wrong. Um, as long as you have like a four year window and you're gonna catch, okay, so maybe you invested at the peak of this bull, bull season, but then the next bull season, you're going to catch that expanse. Um, so nobody really knows. I think it's it's pretty challenging. I've definitely, you know, I've made a few mistakes of telling people, oh, you should buy this coin or that coin. And then it didn't go well. And then because of that, I'm like, I don't actually right. wanna tell anyone. Yeah, anymore. and you're like, you <laughs> want them to make money and then you feel sad that like, yeah, anyways, yeah, I totally get that. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, I think that there's a huge opportunity for women to invest, especially, yeah, just like I said, it's it's really sad to see all these white dudes, mostly, um, who are- yeah, Seriously, that's what it is. <laughs> um, as much as like, I, I think it's great that people are, are making money, but it's it's sad that it's not, um, it's not more diverse. But do you, so from, okay, you've been in this way longer than I have, like, where do you think it would be best for me to like direct my energy in this? Cause like say like, I can build a network, I can build a community if I wanted to, but I don't know what to do with them. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Well, so one thing that I've noticed is I've tried talking to my female friends about crypto and maybe I need to do a better job at it, but they are not interested. Mm -hmm. And um and I don't know what the, what that is. Um, like I, I was trying to get my sister to, I was like, here, like I'll give you a hundred dollars. I just want you to buy some Bitcoin. And then she was just like, no. And like looking back on him, like that was a bad idea. <laughs> you should have said no, you should have said yes. <laughs> um, but it's like, I don't know what that resistance is. And so I'm just wondering like, is there a way it's like, oh, you, you know, a yoga thing, you know, something where it's like in line with a lot of women's interests. Um, well, the way that I have been talking to my girlfriends about it is you know, this is financial freedom. Like if you, cause especially here on the island, like we, a lot of people just got stuck here after COVID and now they're they're just kind of making ends meet. And I'm like, if you have like five grand, 10 grand or something. Like I have literally tripled my money since last October. And that's like, <laughs> that's, that is, that's crazy. You know, like it, compared to any other investment opportunity to triple your money in such a short amount of time, 
And I don't know if that specific thing will happen again because Bitcoin itself, you know, the percentage of increase to all of that. But yeah, maybe that's maybe that's something more to look at is the start asking why are they hesitant? Because I think a lot of women just shut down because they think, oh, it's something I don't understand and I don't want to look dumb and like I'd rather just someone else deal with it. Um, Cause, and I, I like what you said that you don't have to be a developer. Cause where I'm at is I, I spent like the last three or four months, like doing crypto trading and just kind of like doing little things here and there. And my, my boyfriend went to university for stockbrokering. And so then he just transferred his skills. He was a stockbroker for five years in London. And now he's just transferred his skills over and he's a crypto trader. And he's like 180% up, you know, like he's just like, this is what he does. And he's very good at it. So I've been shadowing some of his trades and just asking him questions and this and that. And I'm like, this is amazing, but if I was alone in my house trying to do this, I would feel very overwhelmed and I would probably just walk away. So like, how can we, how can we replicate this very supportive situation where it's like fun and like you're working together and it's something like you're, you know, you're building a connection with your friends and partner with, um, because I've never felt that where it's like overwhelming, because, but I also had someone sitting with me the whole time, like, this is what you do and like, this is what you need to learn and I also was given access to like so many courses and so I just would sit and like cook food and like watch um, I have an on-tech course about whatever how blockchain works you know so yeah I just I see it as this huge opportunity and I, I really feel very strongly that this is a big window to lay the foundation I talked to a lady um, yesterday her name is Tessie um, and she is the head of product, product and innovation for consensus and she's founded something called um, Women in Blockchain. And it has like 4,000 women in it. It's a community based in New York, but now they're expanding everywhere. And she was like, literally anything you want me to do, like I'll support you or this and that. And I was like, okay, I'm trying. <laughs> so I've just been meditating a lot, literally meditating, just like, okay, asking the universe to send me in the right direction. And well, I think it, I think it's going to, but it, I'm just pinging you about this. Cause I, if you do, even if it's in a week or so, like have some ideas or someone comes up, you're like, yeah, you should talk to Brittany or something. I'm so up for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's no, I don't have immediate ideas at the moment. Um, it's okay. Yeah. Other things I want to talk to you about is manifesting things and spiritual stuff. These are things that we also love. And I would love to chat about this on here because I think other people would benefit from it. Um, do you have anything? I, I can't remember the last thing we talked about with this, but I remember you asking me some questions and I would love to answer them in person if you had any, because I've just been going so deep in the manifesting abundance world. So yeah, I'd love to, um, if you could talk about uh, your journaling practice. I thought that that was really, really cool. Yeah. So every morning I, I'll just say my morning routine really fast. I wake up around six, which is super early, but it's been really hot here during the day and, um, and go for a run on the beach. All right. First thing I do is meditate and then I go for a run on the beach. I swim and then I sit down and I journal. So I kind of like let it all out, whatever I woke up with, whatever dreams I had, and then I'll sit down and I will do like five minutes or whatever of just free, free flow, like journaling. And then I will set my intentions for the day and then, and then set what I want to manifest. And so, and the way that I write them is as if they've already happened. So I write like, I'm so grateful, you know, that I got this thing, or I'm so grateful that, um, you know, the universe gave me the direction that I needed to go for this project or this and that. And then I just try and really feel into that emotion. And this might sound super woo woo for a lot of people who like have never really done any of these things. But the thing, the essence of manifesting is to sit in the emotion that you will feel after you receive the thing. And the more that you can sit in that emotion, they say, the more you draw in from the universe, it's like, it's like you are, you know, there's this invisible field and in that invisible field is the thing you want. And like, the more you feel grateful for it, the more you're like pulling it from that invisible field into this reality. And I really believe that. And I've seen it happen so many times to the point where I have to remember what I manifested so that I write down and I'm grateful for it. Because this is another thing is if you manifest things and you're asking stuff from the universe and you're not paying attention, then the universe will stop giving them to you. And so it's like, I have to like, sometimes I'll look at the end of the day, I'm like, what did I say today? And I'm like, oh my God, that came true. Or like, sometimes I'll say it to my boyfriend and then throughout the day, we'll just laugh because like stuff will happen. Like, I'm like, I made a decision the other day that I only wanted to wear clothes that I had personally made or designed or that um, 
was the exact copy of something that was falling apart like you know the basics that you wear around the island because it's like you're in out of the sea and things fall apart really easily and then there's a certain pair of shorts that i couldn't find anywhere for last year and they're falling apart it has rips and we went somewhere randomly that day like for a home like a home depot version and it randomly had this like clothing section in the back and it was exact pair of shorts and he was like how are you, what and you're just not even surprised anymore and i'm like yeah <laughs> and that's like a super small thing but i think that's a very tangible example of like you can you can literally have anything you want most of it is that we block ourselves because we don't believe we deserve to have the thing and that's like a whole other conversation you know well cool i love that and how has that evolved over time how has your practice evolved i think this is that's a really good question because last year when COVID hit, I, I was like in some of the darkest times ever. Like I had had a, a breakup, a scooter accident. I got dengue and people don't really talk about this, but after dengue, you get really, really depressed. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was just like super low and, and I kind of just like was really asking the universe for a sign, you know? And so I would just like slowly ask for things and then things would arrive. And I remember like, building like these um just super gratefulness things and i'd build these little rituals where i would like light candles and like ask for something and write it down on a piece of paper and like decorate it and then burn it and just like make up these fun rituals to do and and some people might call it magic some people might laugh at it i don't care but then one month last june i i had it was the first time in my entire life that i'd taken time off and this was like a really big thing for me and it was really hard on my survival instinct because from the time I was 17, I was taking care of myself. Like my entire family won't speak to me because I'm not still part of the religion I grew up in. And it's just like, I've been in this very survival mode about having to take care of myself. And I wanted to manifest my way out of that. I was like, I am done with that. I, I am grateful for that getting me to this place and having all these basic experiences, but I want the feeling of abundance and I want to feel like I can create money out of nothing. Um, so I sat down, I did a little journaling manifesting ritual and I asked the universe for $15,000 and I wasn't working at all. And I was just like, if this money comes, I will, <laughs> I will know for a fact that the universe is like, this is real. This whole thing is real because I want to, I also wanted to prove to myself that I could create money by doing what I loved. And last summer I just spent most of my time doing community building. I was working with the local ties and Burmese to like built a community garden and I was like doing all these events, but none of it was making me any money and that's fine, but I wanted to see if I could manifest it. And then there was a stimulus package coming through from the US and I paid all this money to taxes when I worked in corporate and I qualified for unemployment. And the, the thing that was amazing for me was I went to open the, the thing, that you have you log into this thing and I went to log in and it was like, 14999 was the number on screen. I just remember being like, what the fuck? Because <laughs> I was like, how is this possible? And like, do I deserve this? You know, you of course still feel the feelings like, do I deserve this? And like, is this real? And and I remember like when the money finally hit my account, my my own bank account, I was like, okay, this is a thing. And I just remember feeling like this big breath of like relief and the way I carried myself and everything. And it wasn't about having the money. It was about feeling like I was finally in flow state. And I feeling like I was in flow with like what I want to do with my life and the money would come and I could just trust and like not have to be in survival mode. I could thrive. So after that, I was, I've just been shouting about it to everyone. And one of my friends is super into yoga. She studied a lot in India and like apparently this mudra um, where you have your hands like this equals abundance. And so within our friend group, we started doing this like a secret handshake kind of thing to each other. And we were all like abundance. And, like I was talking about it all the time. And then when I did Vipassana, I took a silent meditation retreat in January. And that's like when everything just clicked. And I like would be in these silent meditations at like 4 a.m. in the morning when it's completely dark. And all you see is like a candle they have burning. And I could just visualize everything that I wanted to do. And since then, the last two months, it's just like slowly coming true, coming true, coming true. Um, to the point where, yeah, it gives me goosebumps. I'm like, what else can I manifest, you know? And you start, and it, and it becomes less and less about you. It becomes less and less about myself and my ego. It's more about like how much impact can I make and like how can I help other people and how can I raise the vibration of like everyone around me? Um, so I've been doing less like one to many of like making videos and trying to do these big things and more like every week we have a family dinner at our house and we do a sharing circle and like every, the 20 of us come together and we cook together and we like, it's like this really like 
in uh, I know I, I have the feeling of a client like when you get in your hands in the dirt and you like really like get to the nitty gritty of um yeah like building your spirit and your soul and I think that's like really helps you connect to the universe wow this sounds super woo woo <laughs> I'm just realizing if I watched myself like a year ago and watching like this interview I'd be like what the fuck but I know that I love talking to you about this because you and I are I feel like you have actually been more on the spiritual path before I was yeah I don't know um I I was raised pretty new age and then I think I've backed away from it quite a bit um and yeah but it's it's really cool to hear about you know your experience and your um your practice and how like the all the synchronicities and like I have had some really cool synchronicities in my life and it's cool to like think about them and um kind of have a more enchanted worldview it's like whether you know whether it's real or it's not it's just a lovely experience to to have this enchanted worldview and to and to perceive reality that way yeah I mean I think like whether we believe that we create our reality, and I do believe we do, but even if it's just from a perspective point of view, if it's like, why not have this perspective that we can influence our reality and we can focus on, but it wasn't, there's a saying that's like, wherever your energy flows, like that's where, where your, your thoughts flows, where energy, wow, where your thoughts go, energy flows, something like this, but it's like, the point is we, we focus on whatever we want more of. And for me, I'm like, yeah, I want to be manifesting things. I want to like create things. I want to do awesome things in the world. And I'm like super grateful for everything along the way. But one thing that's been crazy for me is like how much more emotional I am the last year. Like in the, in the sense of like, I think before I was really leaning into my masculine and just like, I have to do the thing. And I would shut down a lot of my emotions and I wouldn't acknowledge them. But then they would bleed out in different ways where I'd like freak out on someone or I'd shut down and not want to talk to anyone. And now I'm just like, I really feel overwhelmed and I like tell my close friends and I have a community of people that will listen and they really support and and it's just like really beautiful to feel that because that's something I miss from my family like I miss having that support so I think that all ties into having like a safe space to feel comfortable manifesting stuff you know yeah yeah one shift that I've made this past year is having a lot more space to just like feel emotions and to um, yeah, I was like you, I was like super, super like, oh, I've got to be really productive. Now I'm less productive, admittedly, but I'm actually, I'm not burning out because I'm attending to my emotional side and taking space. And I just really, really love space, like introverted space, space to feel, space to do yoga. And um, that's just made a really big difference in my like mental health and feelings of well-being. That's awesome. Yeah. And how is, how is COVID been there? Like, I don't really understand what's happening. <laughs> yeah. Me. Yeah. So, um, so the numbers are pretty high. I don't know what they are, um, but we're going into a third wave basically. Mm -hmm. um, and the year it's been, it's interesting talking, mostly I've talked to people in the US and the people in the US seem to have had a much more difficult experience. Um, but here it's been like kind of chill, like you don't wear masks outside normally. Um, which is a big difference in the US because it's like, you know, the, the study shows yeah, it's fine. like, yeah, if, if you're outside, then there's actually a really low risk if you're as long as you're social distanced or whatever. Um, so it's like, I feel like we're able to be a little bit more logical and be like, okay, we don't have to wear a mask. It's only like when there's actual danger that you have to wear a mask. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's one big difference, but there have been lockdowns to try to get the spread to be less. Um, and so yeah so basically at times everything's been shut down other than grocery stores and um i'd say that it's felt pretty chill uh, there's a, a pretty good social security net in germany um so i know that freelancers were able to like get compensated because if their freelance work was related to um you know the service industry so I know that there's, yeah, been been quite a bit of support, which I, I think is different than, um, you know, in the US, that's my main comparison that I have. Um, mm -hmm. But I know that, you know, in, in Thailand, it sounds like everything's been really chill. Yeah, we had, I mean, here on Kampanya, we had one case last March and that was it. And then we just kind of had like the curfew and you could eat, you could to take away in restaurants, but you couldn't eat in restaurants. And then they went away with that. And then like in June last year, everything opened up. And then 
And then like last fall, like in October, we had it where, no, sorry, last December, all of a sudden, like there was this big flare up in Bangkok and they actually did a proper lockdown. Um, no, not lockdown, I'm sorry. It's more like Bangkok, certain districts, they did lockdown, Bangkok, they had a lockdown, but here on the island, it was basically like, you can't do parties. <laughs> and like, it's so funny because we have like such, like we, I didn't realize, but we have, I read an article after, like when they had the second wave here, it was like, we had the best quality of life for anyone in the world, like during wow. last year. And I didn't know that. Like, I just yeah. thought, I don't know, we got cases, like everyone's got cases. Or I just, you know, cause Mexico is also open and like this Bali is like open and not and all these things. So I just assumed that we were kind of on par, but they were saying it was like up until the December stuff happened, we had the lowest cases and open for the most amount because they had normal New Year's and they had normal Christmas, like everything was completely normal. And then they had all these cases come down from Myanmar. And it kind of exploded everything. But now it seems like it's going back to normal. Like we can do parties. I just came, I just organized a big festival last weekend with like 300 people. And it was just like so much fun. And we're going to do another one next next uh, month. We're planning a big one, which I can't wait to tell you about when we get it all confirmed. And then, yeah, I mean, for me, I'm just kind of focusing on building community. I'm learning to DJ, which is really fun. One of my girlfriends is teaching me how to DJ. And then um, I've been making designing clothes and then yeah, just like focusing on blockchain stuff and seeing how I can impact that, but just being a lot more in like flow state and just feeling like I'm getting a lot of things done without being stressed about it, which has been really awesome. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Um, yeah, I love this conception that you don't have to, you know, slave away and make something, and, but you can actually kind of play with, oh, where's my energy flowing and I'll go do that and engage with that. And that's definitely um, a difference that I've been, yeah, on as, as well. It's like, you just kind of burn out, like trying to force mm -hmm. things to be the way that you want at some point. And yeah, that, that sounds really lovely. Yeah, I mean, I think COVID really helped with that because it was like, well, first off, you couldn't really distract yourself even when you were, because for me being extroverted, I would distract myself by doing lots of things like externally and of course that didn't really help it just made me more tired or travel extra extra um and then with after COVID I was like what do I want like what do I and I think it was a really big opportunity for people to grow like in their personalities and like but I also realized that for some people it, like I am so grateful that I'm in Thailand and it's warm and like we haven't really had much of a lockdown I feel so bad for some of my friends in New York who are still like going through a lot of stuff. And they were one of the first ones in New York to, uh, in the US to get locked down like last March. So like a year later and they're still like in semi lockdown and New York's tiny. It's like these tiny little apartments and they're just stuck inside like a shoe box basically. Yeah. So. yeah, I think it's it's it hasn't been good for people's mental health, especially can you imagine being locked down just by yourself? That sounds really, really, really hard. Even for me, an introvert, it's like, it's, it's, it's really hard. And how is it? Because you, you're there with your boyfriend, right? So you guys both work out of the house? Yeah. Yeah, it's great. I mean, we have a really good relationship, so that makes it great. I think it's really difficult if you and your partner are arguing. I know it's been really tough for people with kids mm -hmm. um, and just because they never get any space at all. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, for me, it's been it's been totally fine. The question that I really like asking is, if what would you want to say to your younger self before you started traveling? That could be oh, that yeah. maybe um I really overthought things I overthought things way and I was so scared so scared and I was just like thinking through all the disaster scenarios mm -hmm. and I was like oh gotta get the gear right gotta get everything right gotta read all these digital nomad blogs about you know what do you have to have and it's like all of that didn't matter it didn't matter if I mm -hmm. like if I had a backpack or a suitcase it didn't matter if I had xyz um and obviously yeah you know, maybe something bad could have happened, but um, I just think like a lot less stress and a lot less fear and a lot more trust. Mm, that's awesome. And it's all worked out for you, right? Like, I was basically be like, you are a case study of it. it's all going to be fine. It's going to work out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I know that that's not everybody's experience, but I think no matter what, you'll have some good, um, good life experiences. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that too. I'm mean, like, so many of our friends, we know, we both know that have, you know, in the long run, maybe gone home or like gone back to a semi nine to five life, but that just, they're never going to say, Oh, I wish I hadn't traveled or I wish I hadn't tried, you know, 
Yeah. And, and sometimes people travel and realize that they don't want to do that. And that's also really okay. I remember realizing how much I, for the first couple of years when we traveling, I was like, everyone needs to do this. And I was like, kind of shouting about it. It's like all my friends back home. And then I finally realized like, not all of them want this lifestyle. And that's also totally fine. As long as they're happy and they're doing the thing. And I support that as well. That was just like really eye opening for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for letting me interview you. And yeah, I, I can't wait till I can come out and like be there with you in Berlin or you can come out to Thailand. I, I would love to have a reunion in person soon. Yes, I, I would absolutely love that. Cool. Well, it's super, super fun talking and learning about manifestation and uh, everything. So yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks Alex. Okay, bye. Bye.